old one has returned. The demons once again threaten our very existence. Isolated from the outside world by a deep and colourless fog. But this is not their story. No. It is yours. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and this video is an in-depth walkthrough of the process for creating this new piece of artwork titled Warrior of Sunlight. Created with Photoshop, it's both inspired by and using screenshots from the game Demon's Souls. Ah, Umbasa. And the great thing about using in-game screenshots is that some video games look visually quite stunning. And if it's a game that has a built-in photo mode, a character creator, and the ability to customize your weapons and armor, then you really can create and pose your own character in the desired location, take a screenshot, and then use this in your creative work. And that's exactly what I've done here. So before we hop into Photoshop, I'm going to need some screenshots from the game. So this is Demon Souls. I've posed and dressed my character and I've opened up photo mode. Typically photo modes come with a lot of different camera settings and I'm adjusting the field of view slider here. Let's get nice and close to the character and take a picture. And I actually need a bit more ground to work with. So I'm going to zoom back out and take a second picture with some more surrounding elements. And you can then use a USB stick to transfer those images onto your computer. Okay, Photoshop time. Rightio, so I've started by creating a new document, 4,500 by 6,000 pixels. And I'm going to open both of my Demon Soul screenshots. And using the quick selection tool, I'm going to make a selection of the ground on the image that's a bit more zoomed out. And it doesn't matter that part of the legs are caught in this selection because I will be using the other image for the character anyway. Okay, let's cut and paste this into the main document. Now I can switch over to the other screenshot and grab everyone's favorite, the pen tool. I'm now going to use the pen tool to draw a path around the subject. And the reason I'm doing it on this image is because this one was a bit more zoomed in on the character. So the character from this image is going to be a little bit higher res, overall higher quality. And I'm going to drop this lovely high res character cutout on top of the other image. So whereas the other image does have a bit of leg still on it, this high res character image will be sat on top of those low res legs. Low res legs? Well, that's something you don't hear every day. Right, 17 hours of pen tooling later, I can now make a selection of the work path and then add a layer mask to cut out the character. I'm then going to right click this layer and convert to smart object, give the layer a name and then resize this and position it over the low res legs. I'm then going to resize and reposition everything to sit at the bottom of the canvas and then open an image of some mountains. I can then do a very quick selection of the mountains and copy and paste this into the main document. Next, I'm going to open up an image of a sunset, copy and paste this into the main document and make sure it sits behind all of the other layers. And I'm really liking how this is starting to come together. And you know what else I like? The sponsor of this video, Invato. Invato Elements has millions of assets, unlimited downloads, which come with a commercial license. These include, but not limited to, photos, illustrations, textures, brushes, icons, video, motion graphics, music and sound effects, and an excellent library of 3D models. Why excellent? Well, because you can rotate a 3D model to your desired angle, download as a PSD or PNG, or simply throw it at the TV. <laughs> I spent way too long making that. Sign up now for $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. Next, I'm going to open up this 3D castle downloaded from Invato Elements, and I'm going to reposition this and give it a name. I'm going to add a layer mask, make a quick selection, and then use the brush tool to try and blend the castle with the mountain. And I'm actually going to select both layers, convert to a smart object, rename the layer, and then double click the thumbnail to go inside the smart object. Now I can add a color balance adjustment layer, Add a clipping mask to the castle so that only that layer is affected and then adjust the sliders for the shadows, midtones, and highlights to make the castle a bit more blue, thus balancing the color. And I could do the same with an exposure adjustment layer. And once that's done, save and close and do the same in the main document, balancing the colors and the exposure with that overpowering sunset in the background. And at this point, I'm going to do a bit of layer management and group all of the objects in the foreground together and all of the objects in the background together. And this is going to make my life a lot easier. Actually, not really. I've still got two kids at home and if I recall, the washing up needs doing. But anyway, I'm now using color balance adjustment layers to balance the colors of all of the different objects in the scene.
I'm now going to add a solid color adjustment layer to the mountain and the castle, make this kind of an orange, and then play around with the blending modes until I get the desired effect. And remember if you're stacking adjustment layers to adjust the order, as this can dramatically affect the end result. I'm now going to do something similar for the sun, so you can see the entire image is moving in a very orange-esque direction. Which kind of makes sense, courtesy of that giant sun. And this next part is pretty much me just using adjustment layers to blend all of those different objects in the scene together. So if it's alright with you, I'm gonna go and make a cup of tea. Okay, so colors and exposure balanced. I'm now going to create a new layer, call this cloud, and then sample a color from the background. Now with the brush tool selected, from the drop down I can select my cloud brushes, courtesy of Envato Elements, and then I'm going to stamp a few clouds into the scene, adjust the size, position, rotation, the exposure, the color, essentially creating a mist around the castle and the mountains. Now I'm going to add a color lookup adjustment layer. I'm going to make sure this is at the top of the layer stack and then you can pick a LUT from the drop down. These are like presets and they can give your design a very stylized look and you can stack multiple LUTs on top of each other. Next I've got some cinder spark particle things. I'm going to open these in Photoshop and copy and paste these into the main document. I'm going to make sure this layer is on top of the other objects in the scene give it a name, and then change the blending mode from normal down to screen. This blends the dark areas of the image into the scene, and I can now adjust the size, position and rotation, and it adds a nice little effect to my design. Next I'm going to do the same with a flame, copy and paste this into the main document, give it a name, change the blending mode to screen, and then I'm going to position this on the end of the spear. Fire spear. Yeah! I can then go to edit, transform and warp, and then distort the shape a little bit, just so it fits the main body of the spear. I'm also adding some more adjustment layers to warm up the colour of the floor around the subject, and this is going to act as some light being cast from that giant sun in the background. Now this next bit is a bit of a weird one, I duplicated the sun and moved this right to the top of the layer stack, changed the blending mode, masked it, and then brushed parts of the image back in. Having these duplicates of layers so far apart in the layers panel isn't ideal, but then I added a layer mask and I was able to brush back in some glare from the sun. And if I turn the other layers back on, you can see the glare is a little bit overpowering, so with that layer selected I'm just going to bring down the opacity ever so slightly. Now the design's coming along, so with everything selected I'm going to go copy merged, paste in a flattened version of the design so far, give it a name, and then right click and select convert to smart object. And then holding Alt or Option and clicking between the layers, I can just clip those adjustment layers to that final layer. And with the layer selected, I'm going to add a camera raw filter and just spend a moment tinkering with all of these different sliders and also adding some grain just to introduce a little bit of noise into the final image. You can preview your changes by clicking this icon at the bottom of the panel, and when you're happy click OK. Now I'm going to do a bit of work on the character, so I'm going to add a new hue and saturation adjustment layer, check the box colorize, and increase the saturation, the lightness, and then adjust the hue so it's kind of like an orangey color. I can then invert the mask, select the brush tool in the color white, and brush back in some highlights from the sun. And you can use a large soft brush with the flow at somewhere between 2 and 5% to brush in some soft glow from the sun. Or you can make the brush a lot smaller, bring up the flow, and then you can brush in some more precise highlights. And I'm just going to spend a minute doing this, so if you'd like to skip ahead to the next bit, there's some timestamps in the video description.
Okay, so because I've made some changes to the design, I'm now going to need to update these changes inside that final smart object, just so all of those camera raw filters are applied. Once I've done that, I can save and close. I'm now going to duplicate this layer and then go up to filter, down to distort and select wave. I can then tinker with the sliders and introduce some wavy ripples into my design. The preview is really small, so if you get it wrong, don't worry, it's a smart object, you can go back in and make some changes. I'm then going to add an inverted layer mask and brush back in some of that wave effect along the top edge of the sun. Now that's all set up, as I mentioned, I can go back in and still tweak that wave effect and make it more or less intense. I'm also going to stamp in some brushes to add some cinders and sparks coming off of the flaming spear. And if you'd like to learn how you can use actions to make your fire brushes more realistic, well, there's a card at the top of the screen that will link to another tutorial demonstrating this technique. Unless, of course, I forget, in which case there will be no card. I'm just going to dot a few more in here, there and everywhere, and then make a few minor adjustments. Lastly, I've converted the background into a smart object, so I can go filter, blur gallery, and field blur. I can use this to introduce some blur that's a bit more realistic and watch this effect slowly eat away at my computer. You can also check high quality if you're a madman and then click okay when you're happy. Blur. The last thing to do is update any changes in the final smart object, turn on any hidden layers, and that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed this video, you can always subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, take care, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>